We want to know how to hook one instance of Azure Front Door to three instances of Azure Web Apps. Use the rule engine and let it handle the certificates. Stay tuned. So this video is a very simple video about Azure Front Door. It's a very minimalist use of it, but I thought it would be interesting. To follow up to the last video I did, on the same solution where I show how to use GitHub Actions. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Azure Front Door and how it can help improve your solution. First, let's look at the architecture of the solution. So that's a bit of a recap from last time. So the solution is based on Azure App Services, where the code is running and so it runs the application itself. In front of it is Azure Front Door with custom domains that is handling every request and forwarding it back to Azure Web Apps. So it acts as a reverse proxy to Azure Web Apps. And also there's a DNS zone that we're gonna look at quickly to handle my domain, my custom domains. Uh, this time we're gonna focus on Azure Front Door. So what is Azure Front Door? Azure Front Door has a ton of features as we can see from this feature list. Here are the features of Azure Front Door. There are many features, but we'll really focus on some today. Maybe we'll focus on the custom domain, uh, the fact that we're doing SSL floating, we'll talk a bit about that, and the acceleration, we're going to talk about it right now. So, why is Azure Front Door accelerating your traffic? I don't know about you, but that bugs my mind. How can you put something in front of a web server, and that makes it faster to access? Without caching, Azure Front Door can cache like a... I can buy edge cache. But even without caching, by really trying to each request is going to hit your website, but it's going to be faster. Why is that? For that, we need to look at the life cycle of a request. Well, let's look at a map. So let's assume, let's assume that my web app is sitting on the West US regions, on the West Coast, somewhere on the West Coast, not important where it is exactly, but there's an Azure region, there's a data center there, and physically, my user needs to get to that region. Let's say my user is sitting in Montreal, like I am, so it's in Canada, on the east coast of North America. We're going to go to what is called a POP, a point of presence. So what is a POP? A POP is a point of presence. A point of presence is a bunch of servers distributed around the world and they can handle your request. And the closest one in my case is in Montreal, so my request is gonna hit this Montreal POP, and then it's gonna be forwarded all the way to the East Coast, to my Azure Web App. So why is it faster? Well, first, you could have caching. So and it would be a very good idea for you to cache everything that is uh, JavaScript, images, everything that's static in your website, you could cache. So this way it would be served at the pop location. So even if your user is in Moscow, there'll be a cache there. It's going to talk directly to the cache locally. And hence the traffic, the latency would be much shorter and much faster. But let's look at the case that it's not cached. So there's two reasons why the traffic is faster than. First, there's the question of networking. Once you hit the pop and you go to the web, web application, you do that on Microsoft private network. So you're no longer on the internet. And that network, as many private network, is more reliable than the internet. So when you do a request on the internet, a lot of packets might get lost. And something we don't see when we use the internet, the packets do get lost. And because TCP is reliable, the packets get remitted by the, uh, the origin and we end up seeing what we have to see. But packets do get lost and that accounts for some latency. So that's one of the reasons why communication using a pop like, a, like Azure Front Door is faster because it's more reliable essentially. The user has less distance to to, to do on the wild internet before it gets to this private network. The other reason has to do with the TSL uh, protocol, so the HTTPS, for instance. So the protocol has a handshake, and again, it's not something we see when we use a browser, we just type HTTPS, uh, whack, whack something, and we get to the server. What really happens behind the scenes is that there's a request sent, there's a challenge posed by a server saying, hey, it's my public key, I do something with it. <coughs> and, uh, that there's 
there are different when you use uh, Azure front or you do this back and forth locally. So in my case in Montreal, so I go very fast, I do those handshakes, and then there's other handshakes being done in the background, but those are cached by uh, Azure front door. So even if it's different users, they're gonna use the same session, if you will. And because of that, again, we reduce latency. So this is why uh, defining the mining is actually faster by putting something in front of your website. So I show you the application, it's just a web application. Why did I want to use Azure Front? I told you it's a very simple application. So why did I want to do that? It wasn't for network acceleration. It's there, it's nice. The real reason was for certificate management. Yes, I'm a lazy person. I hate managing certificates. It just doesn't get to my mind why a sequence of numbers is so hard to manage. And when it gets obsolete, your server stop working. It's just a detail of implementation for me. It is boring. I, I don't want to have anything to do. Fortunately, Azure Front Door can manage your certificate. It's an option that few customers use, and we should because it's free. It's part of the service, and uh, they will always be up to date. They'll be renewed automatically, and life is beautiful. And this is why I used it. Uh, why didn't I use the Azure Web App Certificate? I started to try to want to use that. Then I tried to automate that with ARM templates. It was complicated. Parts of it were introduced, so I ended up using Azure Front Door. There are lots of reasons why Azure Front Door is a good idea to post in front of your website. You can easily redirect the traffic. If something goes wrong, you can redirect to another region. It's, it's really useful to have that. Plus, it gives you telemetry. So let's look at how it looks in the Azure portal when you do configure Azure Front Door. So here are all my resources for my solution. I have my front door, uh, application service plan, application services. I get my three environments over here. Got some Azure monitor going on. So let's go into Azure front door. The easiest way to understand what's going on with Azure front door is to look at the designer. So front door designer. And the way it works is that we have the front end. This is what the user the browser will hit. The back end is what is actually serving the request. And the routing rule is what's binding the two, basically. So how do you connect the front end with the back end? So let's, let's look at that. I have my default front end over here. That's a default DNS name. It comes when I build it basically as the name of the resource and uh, it's bound there. I don't really use it. It's not, uh, there's no rules connecting it to anything. Then I have my dev dot gram dash dot dot com so that's a custom dns click on it you can see that i enabled the custom domain https so boom right there i got my ssl going on got a certificate managed by azure front door i don't need to take care of that as i mentioned that was a trigger why it shows the technology so front door managed you see here uh, minimum version 1.2, da, da 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 I don't use the web application firewall. You can use that with Azure front door. It's actually one of the nice feature. And I don't use session affin affinity because I believe in scalability. Discussion for another day. And that's about it for the, fr the front end or the, the, the domain. That, so this is what I want Azure front door to answer it. And by configuring that, this domain is exposed everywhere in the world through the point of presence. So depending on where you are in the world, if you try to resolve that, you'll resolve to a different IP address mapping to the pop closest to you. If you look at the backend, I got true backend, dev staging prod. Not surprisingly, this points to the Azure web app. Interesting to mention, those two have an SSL that's provided by App Service. So I don't manage any SSL, but I'm SSL all the way through. Uh, SSL connection is terminated at Azure front door endpoint, and then a new one is initiated to communicate with Azure Web App. Here I configure some probing method to see if the service is healthy. Hopefully it is, otherwise I don't. I just have one backend, so that's it. Protocol is HTTPS, which means that when Azure front door communicates with Azure website, it communicates over HTTPS. So the connection is always secure between front door and my backend. 
I see here I got priority one and weight uh, 100. If I had many backends, I could divide that differently. So a typical scenario would be to round robin through different regions or to different backends. I could configure that over here. And a load balancing has some probing configuration here. Now, if we look at the routing rules, so as I mentioned, those are binding the front ends with the back end. So if I look at the dev one again, just to stick with dev, staging and product are configured similarly. So what do I do here? I have a status enabled. I accept HTTP and HTTPS requests. We'll see that when I get an HTTP request, I'll forward it to HTTPS automatically, but I do accept it. It's not like I don't answer 404 or page not found. I do accept the request. The front end for this rule is the dev front end over here. We can only have one front end per rule, makes sense. Then I can have different pattern matching, and this is the power of Azure front door I'm not using, but that's pretty slick where you could have different pages or different sections of your website being answered by different backends. Uh, the example we often give is the video section would be served by different servers than the image, et cetera, et cetera. I could have, for instance, all my images or scripts served by a storage account, for instance. That's another example. The route detail, I'm using a rule engine configuration. We'll talk about that a little later. The route type is forward. That means the call is forwarded by Azure Front Door. So Azure Front Door acts as a reverse proxy. If I put redirect, it's basically going to pop up a 302 saying go there. So the browser, your browser would directly go to my backend. That's not what I want. I want to forward over there. And the backend pool is this one. And the backend pool is the dev one. The forwarding protocol is HTTPS only. I could match the request of so the request coming in HTTP, it could go with HTTP, but in my case, I want to always go HTTPS. I don't use any URL rewrite. I could, and I could forward somewhere else, and I don't use caching. So that's another interesting feature. I could have a routing rule that says, when you go to the slash scripts of my site, do cache. And different configuration for the caching but you can cache at the front door level, so at the pop level, so your cache is super close to the user. So I glance uh, very quickly on the rule engine. So I have this web app engine here. What does it do? So that's uh, another feature entirely. It's relatively new. So let's go see what that is. So a rule engine is really, as its name suggests, a couple of rules you can put when you get a, a request to transform your request. So in this case, what do I, I have one, so I could have more than that, but you can see the association. This uh, rule engine is associated with my three thing rules. So let's go and look at it. So it's a if then else conditioning. So if the request protocol is equal to HTTP, then redirect me with a 302 to HTTPS only, but preserve the host, preserve the path, and preserve the query strings. What does that mean? Basically, do a redirect on the actual, the exact same path, just replace HTTP by HTTPS. And boom, I associate that with all of my routing rules, and now my site is always HTTP. And to prove that, if I type my custom domain name with HTTP in front of it, it goes in and boom, it's, it's redirected to HTTPS. So here's my DNS. It's a DNS zone, an Azure DNS zone. VanSalonZone.com is my domain name, same domain name that serves my blog. And I can see a couple of entries over there. And you can see, for instance, dev.grampasa maps to as a c name to front door default domain name so that's the same gimmick than everything else in the cloud we always use c name to map a domain name to another one so what does that mean exactly just a little recap for those of us who are not network specialists so what does it mean to map something with a c name let's look at it so if i do an s lookup of my domain dev the grandpasa.incidentlogon.com. So it tells me the destination, which is this 192, but it tells me where it passes. So it says, okay, this guy, the canonical name, so the C name is front door dash blah, blah, blah. 
And this front door thing, the canonical name is, oh, star dash Azure FD. Prod, oh, traffic manager seems to be underneath it. Then this thing has another canonical name, which is jewel dot t da da da. And jewel dot da 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 is a canonical name to this thing. So you see that there's multiple mapping from one to the other. And at some point, it maps the physical IP address. And I wouldn't be able to tell you where, but somewhere within that mist is a, a mapping that depends on where you, the user initiating the request are. And depending on where you are, you're gonna be mapped to something different. So it's a funky DNS resolution where depending on where the customer is coming from, it's gonna give you a different resolution. This is used throughout the web. That's why uh, Google being that type of services answer very fast wherever you are in the world because they'll map you to a server that's closer to you. All right, so that was it. I hope you find this uh, useful. So Azure front doors, really, it's a, it's one of the hidden gems inside the Azure platform, I find it. It buys you a lot, it buys you, it's a level of indirection. So always good in engineering to have, a, software engineering anyway, to have a level of uh, indirection because you can do plenty of things. You could have a complex website that have multiple backends. You could have your video uh, used by, or served by one backend, your image section served by maybe a, an Azure storage account. Your real web, you, the, most of the websites served by another website. So you can hide all of that with Azure front doors. It's a gateway that's very useful. And as I mentioned, there's the caching that we talked about. So you could cache static content that is quite useful as well. You can enforce different policies. For instance, the version of TSL you want to use. If you have a complex website with multiple regions, it can be very useful when you do deployments because you can take down the region, update it, put it back on, that type of thing. And as we mentioned, it does accelerate your traffic. And why wouldn't you want to do that? And it's very cheap to use. A call to action, look at my GitHub site, uh, link down below, and try it on your website, see, uh, see how it goes. You can you can use other front door on anything if you want. You can front door uh, bing.com if you want to. So it's very easy to try. Try it today. If you have any comments, leave them down below. Otherwise, I'll see you next time.